The rivalry between these two cities is something that runs really deep. You've got the English, you've got the French, you've got Montreal, you've got Toronto, you've got Quebec, you've got Ontario, and it's just been a rivalry culturally, politically, economically, and on the field and in the rink since you know hundreds of years. The greatest rivalries have that kind of cultural conflict that doesn't really exist in North America, but it does here. Really what you're seeing is two distinct peoples, two peoples who are vastly different in the ways that matter coming together to fight. This is not the soccer equivalent of the Maple Leafs versus the Canadiens. This is Toronto FC versus Montreal Impact. What's up guys, I'm Patrick, and Kick has sent me to Canada to take a look at one of North America's fastest growing soccer rivalries, Montreal Impact versus Toronto FC. Right now, we have the perfect backdrop to explore this rivalry, with a two-leg playoff that'll send one of these clubs to their first ever MLS Cup Final. Just 504 kilometers separate Montreal and Toronto, but culturally, they're worlds apart. You could say this rivalry began in the 1700s. The French settled in today's Quebec, while the English chose Ontario. Fast forward almost 200 years, and politics and sport increased their divide. In 1917, the Montreal Canadiens and the Toronto Maple Leafs faced off for the first time, and the intense sporting rivalry was born. In 77, French was made the official language of Quebec by law. It meant education, business, street signs, everything had to be in French. This caused an exodus of English speakers and businesses to Toronto, and some even say the relocation of baseball's Montreal Expos. However, on the soccer pitch, these cities have a surprising history that spans decades. Here in Montreal, pro soccer dates back to the 1970s with the Montreal Olympique and later Montreal Manic. Although short-lived, both were very popular. Then, the Montreal Impacts were founded in 1992, and with a team of local Quebec talent, they had early success across the lower divisions of North American soccer and the Voyagers Cup, or today's Canadian Championship. The Voyager's Cup was largely dominated by Montreal in the initial years. When Toronto joined Major League Soccer, uh, that's when this Canadian Championship really took hold. We have a long history with, uh, with beating Toronto, always being on top of Toronto you know, on the soccer scenes. And the first year, Montreal took it again. And that was pretty straightforward for them because they'd been winning it for so long before that they'd been winning it since 2002. In 2009, the rivalry took a turn. TFC went to Montreal needing to overcome a four-goal deficit to claim the cup. What ensued has become known as the miracle in Montreal. A 6-1 victory in front of hundreds of traveling fans that gave TFC their first trophy ever. And Montreal, some long-awaited competition. That was, I think, the foundation for what is now the modern rivalry of, between Toronto FC and Montreal Impact. Montreal came into the league in 2012, and then in 2013, we saw Montreal just destroy Toronto, 6-0, and it was the revenge. And the days and the years and the weeks that followed afterwards have just made this rivalry grow even more. So it's the night before the match here in Montreal, and we're headed to this bar to speak to some of the Impact's most passionate supporters, Ultras Montreal. I've been following them for several years now. Their choreos, their tifos, everything they do is so sick. So we're here to get their take on this rivalry. The Ultras Montreal started in 2002. We started when we were back in the second division, um, just because there was nothing happening. The Montreal Impacts are really, it's a family club. When they moved up to MLS, there was the history in Montreal that they, they kind of brought back. Uh, last year when they brought in Yellow, all the assistants are local boys. You know, it, it means a lot to, to do well with this team and uh, who wants to be the best in Canada and uh, that's what it comes down to. Historically, this team has always been formed with local players. More than Montreal's team, it's been Quebec's team. It's been the team of the province. Uh, they have uh, Patrice Bernier, who's a hometown guy that is, has been there. And that's, that's something that's very, very important for Montreal. This goes back for me to when I was a kid, having to play Quebec, Ontario games in the provincials. Uh, and uh, it has grown since the five year seasons that I've been in MLS. Every season, uh, each game has meant even more. This is something that, that, that we take a lot of pride in because we've built it from basically from scratch, you know, and, and we've reached the top level in, in North America. The fact that Montreal can sell out the Olympic Stadium, 60,000 plus people, is incredible. This home, like this match, will take the rivalry into infinity. There will be bragging rights, there will be hate. It's going to be packed, it's going to be loud. If we can get three points out of it, maybe like two, three goals. Four goals? Five? Six. At least four. Let's say six. Yeah. Let's get six goals out of it. We should, yeah. uh, we, six we is a good number for us. Go 
Ayango will have a crack at goal! Ayango scores! Montreal Impact get the third goal after just 52 minutes! They got up to 106. That is insane. In the Premier League, they rarely reach 100 decibels. And this is regularly hit 105, 106, even 107 tonight. Now it's Michael Bradley! My word, Toronto FC get a second! Oh no, Jean Pascal avec nous! That was one of the most incredible atmospheres I've ever experienced. Montreal has the slight advantage going into the second leg, but now we're going to Toronto to experience the red side of this rivalry. We've made it to Toronto for like two, and I can already feel the difference here. It's flashy, it's modern, it's very contrary to the historic French feel of Montreal. But this is very clearly a city on the rise, economically, culturally, and perhaps most dramatically, in soccer. Toronto FC joined MLS in 2007, much to the excitement of the city's diverse, soccer-hungry population. But in the early years, they had little to cheer about, as TFC missed the playoffs in their first eight seasons. TFC reflects the identity of Toronto in, in stereotypical ways, in the sense that it's a big money team, and, and that rubs people in the rest of the country the wrong way. They love to watch Big Bad Toronto fall in its face. But in 2015, they finally qualified. And although they were eliminated by none other than the impact, a taste of success breathed life back into the club and their fan base. I think Torontonians are very proud. Uh, Torontonians, because they, they tend to be uh, bashed by the rest of the country, will get their backs up and be very supportive of their hometown. Toronto is a city where 70 to 80% of the population is a first generation or, or, or fresh immigrant from somewhere else. Everywhere else in the world, football is, is, is religion. And, and so you don't lose that mentality when you come here. There, there's a lot of local talent in Toronto who grew up watching the rivalry and they want to represent their city. Uh, it means a lot. Um, it's a special feeling uh, to be from here and, and to play for your hometown. Maybe from Toronto, you know, you, you always want to be the Montreal teams and I can't really say much other than I don't really like them. When you play in Montreal, you know it's almost like a cup final every time you guys play. It's like an El Clasico. The environment just boils my blood. It's the fans that really fuel the rivalry and it's the fans that really fuel me when I play. When Toronto FC joined the league, they brought a level of active support never before seen in MLS. And in recent years, this support has been most vibrant when playing Montreal Impact. The first two years that we were in the league, we got the nickname from, the, from other supporter groups around the league as, as Plastic Ultras because we were traveling in huge numbers, we were doing crazy TIFOs and displays, and I think that this is just the beginning of something really special and something that, that maybe one day could rival Europe or South America and whatever happens here could be as big, it might not be as big, but, but it'll be distinctly North American and, and Toronto will be distinctly Toronto. The city understands the rivalry and the stadium is always much more electric for the Derby, always. The interest it will draw will make this without a doubt the most important game that, that's ever happened between two Canadian club teams. It's the first time in broadcasting history they actually had to cancel a hockey game for, for Montreal and Toronto rivalry. So that just shows how much the game is, is really developing and how much the game is growing. Toronto has put in two goals now and this place is out of control.
electric. 15 minutes for Montreal to get this back, but it doesn't look good. Exhausted and I'm soaking wet. Toronto has taken the bragging rights, but honestly, I'm having trouble processing what we witnessed across these two games. Two thunderous atmospheres, two extremely passionate fan bases. I'm completely convinced that this is one of, if not the best rivalry in North America. Bravo, Canada.